Today's episode of Nerdist News is brought to you by The CW's Naomi. Here's everything you might have missed in the Moon Knight trailer. He is vengeance. He is the nightlight. He is Moon Knight, folks. That's right, Marvel's Merc with a Moon is getting his very own Disney Plus series starring Oscar Isaac. On Monday, Marvel released the first official poster and trailer for the Moon Knight series, and this looks like one of the darkest, most brutal MCU entries to date. Now, if you've been craving the brain-melting psychological horror of Legion, the visceral violence of Daredevil, and the baffling British accent of Oscar Isaac, then this is the show for you. Please, sir, can I have some more? The the trailer introduces us to Stephen Grant, Mark Spector, and all manner of creepy otherworldly figures. With plenty of Easter eggs, comic book deep cuts, and hints about what's to come, there is a lot to dig into before this show launches on March 30th. We're gonna break it all down for you in just a moment, but as always, if you prefer to read all about it, we've got you covered over on Nerdist.com. However, to do so, obviously we need to spoil some aspects of Moon Knight. It's likely nothing you can't read in the comics, but if you prefer to go into this show knowing nothing at all, then leave now before it's too late. All right, let's get into it, shall we? Let's begin with the official description of the show. According to Marvel, the series follows Stephen Grant, a mild-mannered gift shop employee who becomes plagued with blackouts and memories of another life. Stephen discovers he has dissociative identity disorder and shares a body with mercenary Mark Spector. As Stephen slash Mark's enemies converge upon them, they must navigate their complex identities while thrust into a deadly mystery among the powerful gods of Egypt. Now, this all tracks with Moon Knight's comic book origins to a degree. Created by Doug Munch and Don Perlin, Moon Knight first appeared in 1975's Werewolf by Night number 32. And before he was a lunar-themed leading man, Moon Knight was a villain designed to battle Jack Russell, better known as Werewolf by Night. And yes, Marvel did name their werewolf character Jack Russell because he'll tear you apart. Anyway, we'll see more of Werewolf by Night in the eventual MCU Halloween special starring Gael Garcia Bernal. So in that story, for a cool $10,000, which seems pretty cheap if you ask me, this badass soldier of fortune proceeded to hunt down a werewolf with extreme prejudice. But ultimately, he turned on his employers when he realized, hey, these guys are up to no good. They want this werewolf for nefarious purposes. Excellent detective work, Moon Knight. You've done it again. Anyway, Moon Knight appeared on and off during the 1970s until he received his own ongoing series in 1980 from Doug Munch and Bill Sienkiewicz. It seems the Disney Plus series is keeping the core of the Moon Knight story intact, but with a slight twist. In the comics, Mark Spector was our primary way into this character. He was a mercenary with dissociative identity disorder who's imbued with superpowers by the ancient Egyptian moon god Khonshu. In the comics, Mark Spector had three altars, Mark the mercenary and muscle, Stephen Grant the wealthy Wall Street financier who funded Moon Knight's exploits, and Jake Lockley a streetwise cab driver who gleaned information. However, in the show it seems we'll only be dealing with the Stephen Grant and Mark Spector altars. Now for more on the character's comic book origins, I have an episode of Explainiac just ready and waiting for you, which I will link to in the description below. For now though, let's talk about the trailer's opening scene, which depicts a troubled Stephen Grant trying to fall asleep. He's absentmindedly fidgeting with a Rubik's Cube while he uses an app called Inner Sigh on his phone to help him sleep. Sleepwalking appears to be an ongoing issue for Steven, who doesn't seem to be aware of his dissociative identity disorder just yet and is apparently living a double life. He puts tape on the door and even locks himself into his bed at night to ensure that his somnambulism doesn't put him in some ambulance. Steven calls a helpline called Staying Awake as he mentions his sleeping disorder. He says, I can't tell the difference between my waking life and my dreams. This sense of fractured reality is going to be a recurring theme throughout the trailer and the show as we hear dissonant refracted audio, repeated use of reflections, and the sweet strains of Kid Cudi's day and night. Steven wakes up in a panic and leaps out of his bed to turn off the alarm, but falls over because he's still tied to the bed. In the corner of his room, you can actually see a copy of James Van Paugh's Adventures of the Soul in the lower right corner. It's described as a manual for anyone who's ever questioned where they come from, why they're here, and where they go after they die. Now, this feels like a reference to Moon Knight's comic book origins where a mortally wounded Mark Spector collapses in front of the idol of Khonshu. He grants Mark superpowers and saves his life in exchange for servitude. And here, though, it feels like more of a important of what's to come, because I can guarantee that book does not have a chapter about what to do when an Egyptian god marks you as its avatar. Now, Stephen lives in London, and we see him walking to work in the morning. Although he walks past a store called Atlantis, I wouldn't hold my breath to see Namor make an appearance in this show. 
Stephen works at the gift shop at what we're supposed to believe is the British Museum, given that they are extremely well known for having a massive collection of ancient Egyptian artifacts. However, as we see through that disorienting reflection in the puddle, it's actually the National Gallery, which is an art museum. And speaking of that puddle, that is our first visual use of reflections to create a sense of unease, which will be repeated several times throughout the trailer. Regardless, Stephen works at a British museum, but whether it's the British museum remains to be seen. As he stands in front of a bunch of ancient Egypt themed puzzles, his coworker Donna is a real jerk to him. <laughs> now this could be Donna Kraft, a minor character from the comics, but chances are she's an original creation for the show, meant to contrast what a pushover Stephen is compared to the hardened killer that is Mark Spector. Back in his apartment, Stephen sees a much scarier reflection than the wrong museum in a puddle. He sees a split second flash of himself as Moon Knight in full costume in the mirror. He appears to be smiling under that mask, which is just delightfully creepy. And after that, he has a much scarier encounter in the hallway. As he stands in the elevator of his building, a terrifying figure stalks towards him. To Stephen, it appears to be Khonshu, the Egyptian god of the moon, appearing in his comic regalia with white mummy wraps, a crescent moon staff, and an intimidating bird skull face. And while most of Moon Knight's canon establishes Khonshu as this ancient Egyptian deity, Null, the eldritch god of darkness in the Marvel Universe, claimed that he is actually an elder god predating the Egyptian deities who is assimilated into their culture, which is pretty cool. Regardless, he looks awesome in this first sneak peek. Now, of course, when Kanchu finally reaches his bony hand into the elevator to stop it from closing, it turned out to be a sweet old lady, and hopefully not the one from Devil. Before his moon night at the museum, though, Stephen has himself a night at the museum as he wanders through its darkened halls. As he walks past a display case featuring a mummy, we also see a statue of Ra, Osiris, and Anubis, the Egyptian gods of the sun, death and rebirth, and death and mummification, respectively. In the display case, though, we see two concerned reflections of Stephen staring on in shock. And as Stephen walks past, the reflections remain rooted in place. Now, this could simply be a representation of the Stephen Grant and Mark Spector altars, but it could also suggest we'll see the third Jake Lockley altar emerge later in the season as well. And if that character is also inexplicably British, I am lobbying a formal request to rename him to Streetwise Gamgee because enough is enough already. Please, sir, can I have some more? Later, Stephen discovers a mysterious Motorola phone and a key in a hiding place in his apartment. The background image on the phone is a crocodile, and at first I thought this might be Amok, the riddle-loving sphinx who crossed paths with Moon Knight in the comics, but it's much likelier a reference to Sobek, the crocodile-headed Egyptian god of power and the military. Although the military connection would make sense given Mark Spector's past in the comics and the Marines and with special forces, Sobek became the focus of cult worship over the years. Sobek was eventually fused with Horus, the falcon-headed god of kings, and recognized as a solar deity later on when he fused with Ra in later periods of Egyptian history. And all of that could explain the master plan of Ethan Hawke's mysterious villain, Arthur Harrow, which we'll get to in just a moment. But first, let's talk about the mysterious person calling Stephen on this mysterious phone. Now, if you turn on the subtitles on this trailer, the character is named Layla, and that led some enterprising fans to theorize that this could be Layla Miller, a character from the House of M comics. In that story, she helped restore the memories of those whose minds Scarlet Witch had altered. However, it's far likelier that this is a renamed version of Marlene Alarune. Marlene is the daughter of the archaeologist Dr. Peter Alarune and Mark Spector's close confidant and love interest. She was present way back when, when Mark Spector was mortally wounded and became Moon Knight in the comics in the first place. Rather than introducing a random mutant from House of M, it makes a lot more sense that Moon Knight would try to integrate a major character from Mark Spector's past. Now, another item of note here, while Stephen Grant is a generally good guy, it seems, he uses what appears to be an iPhone-esque smartphone. Mark Spector, though a killer for hire, uses a Motorola, which helps skirt Apple's rules on screen about bad guys not being allowed to use iPhones in film and television. Case in point, Sharon Carter during The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Now, moving on, we come to Arthur Harrow, a cult leader slash guru type dressed all in red. And he's walking with, what's that in his hand? A crocodile-headed cane. Now, unlike Loki, Arthur doesn't have to ask German citizens to kneel, they just do it for him. Although the presence of armed guards and a suspicious looking ice cream truck probably make things a lot easier. Now, if you haven't heard of Arthur Harrow, that's okay, because he's only appeared in one issue of Moon Knight ever way back in 1985. And that kind of makes him feel like an odd choice as the main villain of this show. The character was a Nobel Prize nominated physician who studied pain theory and secretly continued experiments the Nazis performed at Auschwitz during World War II. So yeah, not the best guy. 
Rather, this version of Arthur Harrow seems to be combined with another character from Moon Knight's past known as Patient 86, aka the Sun King. Now, the Sun King first appeared in 2017's Moon Knight 188. Diagnosed with bipolar disorder, he became obsessed with both Mark Spector's identity as Moon Knight and the Egyptian sun god Ra. Now, the Sun King developed pyrokinetic powers, perhaps as a boon from his belief in Ra, and formed a cult-like following similar to what we see on the show. So if Ethan Hawke is in fact playing Arthur Harrow as a new version of the Sun King, it makes a lot of sense and creates these fascinating parallels between him and Steven. Both men have these strange connections to Egyptian deities, and both men have to deal with mental disorders. However, it seems like Arthur actually wants to tap into Steven's darker impulses, as we'll see later in the trailer when he urges him to embrace the chaos. So perhaps rather than forming just a simple cult of Ra, Arthur Harrow will form a cult of Sobek Ra, the fused version of the crocodile-headed god and the traditional sun god of ancient Egypt. After all, we did see what appeared to be that crocodile statue in the scene earlier when Stephen's multiple reflections freaked out at the museum. And later on, we do see Arthur come to meet Stephen at the museum as well, so clearly he's drawn there. Now, as we'll see, Stephen is in the crowd to hear Arthur speak, and he's the only one that doesn't kneel. We know from the Disney Plus Day trailer that Mark comes to the forefront and beats Arthur's armed goons to a pulp, and that explains how Mark comes to steal that ice cream truck later in the trailer as well. Before that, though, we see a bit of a role reversal. We see a disoriented Mark for a change staring at a reflection of Steven watching what he's just done in shock and horror. Screaming shut up, Mark smashes the mirror to pieces, creating a very on-the-nose representation of his increasingly fractured psyche. After that, Steven slash Mark has a Keanu-worthy bathroom freakout in an all-white room. It's unclear where this is exactly, but my best guess is that it's a facility owned by Arthur Harrow. It appears as though he's having this moment in front of somebody else who's standing eerily still. So could that be another reflection, or is it going to be someone like Arthur himself? The shot after that finds Steven blacking back in to find himself holding a gun and driving a speeding ice cream truck along a German mountain road, which is never how you want to wake up. Now, as an unconscious or dead goon falls out the back of the truck, we see multiple cars are in hot pursuit. Clearly, Mark made someone scream, and it wasn't for ice cream, much to Steven's chagrin. And adding further insult to injury, we then see Steven falling off a cliff and screaming because I'm guessing that he doesn't have a Class D license. This is followed by a scene of presumably Mark kneeling in a temple of Khonshu inside one of the pyramids in Egypt. The question though is, is this a flashback of Mark making a pact with Khonshu in the past? Or is this a journey that Mark and Steven go on together in the present to understand their godlike patron better? After that, we see Steven freaking out and running through a series of storage units with a duffel bag in tow. Behind him, his shadow forms the crescent moon symbol of Moon Knight on the ground. Now, my best guess is that he stole some artifacts from the museum's collection that are associated with Khonshu, and he'll need those to fulfill his bargain with this deity and become the Moon Knight. As Arthur's voiceover says, embrace the chaos, we see Steven begin to undergo some type of transformation inside a bathroom. Outside though, in the same outfit he wore in the previous scene, Steven transforms into Moon Knight for the very first time, as the costume wraps around his body like the linen wraps used in mummification. Back in the bathroom though, we see Moon Knight in all of his costumed glory, beating the living crap out of a monstrous jackal-like creature. And while this could be a werewolf referencing Moon Knight's first appearance in Battle with Werewolf by Night, its general hairlessness suggests a jackal-esque creature, perhaps in the service of Anubis, the jackal-headed god of death. Or who knows, maybe Steven's just having a really bad day at work, and Moon Knight is beating up some poor guy trying to use the restroom like that elevator grandma earlier. Regardless, Moon Knight lays the smack down on this supernatural creature standing in front of yet another shattered mirror and walks towards the camera giving us our best look yet at this costume, which I have to say, it looks so good. Fantastic details, intimidating look. He looks like the kind of guy that would absolutely go shake down Dracula for missing money. Anyway, folks, there you have it. That is everything we spotted in the Moon Knight trailer. We have plenty of theories about what's to come and we'll be waiting with bated breath until the series premieres on March 30th. Thanks again to The CW's Naomi for sponsoring today's show. From executive producer Ava DuVernay and Arrow writer and co-executive producer Jill Blankenship comes the out-of-this-world new series, Naomi. Join Naomi McDuffie and her crew of Rider Dies as they set out on a wild and terrifying hunt for answers to a multiversal mystery in their small town. Don't believe everything you think, and don't miss the incredible new series, Naomi, Tuesdays at 9, 8 central on The CW, or stream free the next day on The CW app. In the meantime though, folks, let us know, what did you think of the Moon Knight trailer? Did you spot anything that we missed? And is Oscar Isaac's British accent the real villain of this show? Yeah. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com. Boy, I'm the Moon Knight.